Welcome everyone to another episode of Dice and Brushes. Today is a re 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 recording of going over the Orc Codex. And today we're just going to be going over the detachment abilities and the clans. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. For the ninth edition orcs, uh, let's see, clan units excluding Gretchen and orc detachments gain the clan culture's ability. Now for someone like me, coming from, or I shouldn't say coming from, keep in mind that I am a returning orc player from 5th edition back before orcs and anybody else had detachments that could gain things like cultures chapter traits etc so for me this will be first time doing that with orcs all troops units excluding gretchen again in orc detachments gain the objective secured ability which is described in the core rulebook now, there is a specialist uh, ability that you can give Gretchen to give them objective secured. So, if you got Gretchen, it's one of those things that you might as well. But we'll go over that in another video. They have specialist lads. The following orc units can be included in an orc's detachment without preventing that detachment from becoming a clan detachment. However, they don't get the clan culture. So if you you can have Gazgol and uh, Mad Doc Grotznik in the same detachment, but if you have it as a Goths detachment, Gazgol will get the bonus, but Mad Doc Grotznik will not get his Death Skulls bonus. Next up is I'm the boss. You can include a max of one war boss or Def Kill a War Trike, which was FAQ'd to be a speed boss, war boss or speed boss model in each detachment in your army. They FAQ'd it to be speed boss because of the uh, F Forge World uh, war boss on war bike. So. That's something they just didn't think of when they were initially writing this codex. They just didn't take into account the Forge World stuff. Uh, there's a few characters that, if you take them as your Warlord, they have to have a specific Warlord trait. We'll go into the, this into more detail later, but Boss Snickrot, he can only take Brutal Butt Cunning. Butt -cunning. Uh, Boss Zagstruck can only take Big Gob. Gazgul can only take Proper Killy. Captain Badruck can only take Killer Reputation. A Kill Rig can only take Beast Gob. Makari can only take Follow Me Lads. Mazrog Scragbad can only take Shirley as a Squigath. Zagrod Watsnaga can only take Beast Gob. Right, so there's the quick bit about the detachment abilities themselves, but now let's get in the fun part. Let's take a quick little drink here. If your army is battleforged, units from orcs detachments gain access to the following clan rules, provided every model in the detachment is drawn from the same clan, except for the specialist lads. And of course, specialist mob units are included in that. So, special studs, you can still have them in and still be, uh, and still have your clan. If your army contains any clan detachments, you gotta write it on your army roster. Of course, all clan orcs other than Gretchen gain a clan culture. The culture gained depends on which culture they are from, as shown from the following pages. Each clan 
has its own specific Warlord trait, stratagem, and relic. We'll go over this clan specific stuff here, but on another video, we'll go into the more generic uh, Warlord traits. We'll go into the generic stratagems, we'll go into the generic relics, and we might even in those videos come back here just to reiterate. So with no mucking about, let's go to Goths, whose culture is no mucking about. Each time a Goths model makes with this culture makes it a melee attack. Unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. Okay. Each time a model with this culture makes a melee attack. If that model's unit made a charge or performed a heroic intervention in this turn, add one to the strength characteristic of the attack. If it was just one or the other, I'd say okay. Since it's both, I really like this. Especially for the type of list that I am building specifically. I like Goths. Now going on to their Warlord trait is Prop Achille. Plus one to the Warlord tracks characteristic. Each time the Warlord makes an attack, improve the AP by one. That sounds pretty good, but there simply are stronger Warlord traits in the generic section. So we'll hold off on that. The Goth stratagem is Unbridled Carnage for two command points. Use the stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one Goth core or character unit from the army that has the No Muck and Bolt clan culture. Until the end of the phase, each time a model makes an attack, a um, melee attack specifically, it scores an additional hit on an unmodified hit roll of a 5 plus instead of a 6. I really like that. I'm not sure if it's worth 2 CP. I would definitely say for 1, but I don't know if it's worth 2 command points. I just don't know. Uh, going to their specific, clan specific relic. We have the Iron Gob, Goth only. After making a close combat attacks with the bearer, before you consolidate, you can select one enemy unit within one inch of the bearer and roll a d6. On a two up, they suffer d3 mortal wounds. All right, so if you didn't kill them outright, here's an extra chance. So especially if you have uh, some of the secondaries here require your warlord to kill a character, kill a vehicle, or kill uh, five models. This could definitely help you get those. At the same time, though, I would prefer some of the other relics, but we'll go those go over those in another video. But still, not bad. So golfs, like I said, I want to use it for what I'm building, which is basically a melee green tide style list. Uh, like I wouldn't use it for like obviously wouldn't use it for speed freaks, but for what I want, it's good. But let's go over to a clan culture that is being very strong in this edition. So if you want to do shooting orcs or speed freaks, this is one of the two clans to do it with. Oddly enough, Evil Sons I wouldn't do speed freaks with. I do it with either Bad New, Bad Moons, or Free Buddhas, and we'll go over why. The Bad Moons culture is armed to Detief. Add six inches to the range of all Daka and heavy weapons with this culture. 
Each time a model with this culture makes a ranged attack, an unmodified wound roll of a 6 improves the AP by 1. Again, very strong in and of itself. Especially if, again, you have uh, a lot of the buggies, the bikes. Adding 6 inches to the DACA range and the heavy make it easier to get the extra shots from the DACA. And then we'll also go over the uh, in another video. Let's see. How far in there that is that? Oh, it's going to be pretty far in there. On another video, we'll go over the different WAS. But basically, in a speed WA, you can get an extra attack with the DACA weapons. So, bad moons, right off the bat, pretty darn good. The Bad Moon's Warlord trait. The best all motif can buy. The Warlord has a 4-up invul save. And in addition, plus 1 to armor saving throws take, taken for this Warlord. Again, good. I like it. If you have your war boss in, let's say, a uh, Mega Armor, he basically has a 1-up save. With a 4-up infill. Put him in cover, even better. <laughs> He'd be very tough to kill. Uh, but if you're doing a Speed Freaks army, you're probably taking the Death Kill of War Trike. But, and a 4-up infill on something like that is never anything to sneeze at. Next up is showing off their stratagem for one command point. Use the stratagem when you, sorry, when a Bad Moon's core or character from your army is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack with a DACA weapon, an unmodified hit roll of a six scores one additional hit. So if you got a large unit of bikes, they're, they got two guns that are DACA, I believe. Are they 6-4? Let me take a real quick look here. Yep, yeah, war bikers. Oh, sorry, 5-3. And they got two of them. So with... So each one of those under the speed law would be getting six shots at half range, which your half range is extended here. So they each have 12 to shoot of which they hit on fives but so of those 12 dice one in only one in three would actually hit so you'd probably get i believe that's four uh unmodified hit rolls of six scoring scoring additional hit that would probably give you an extra two so now you got six hits per bike multiply by that by however many bikes you got which you can take, let's see, how many can you take? You're going to be, you're going to squad of up to nine here. And then any wound roll of a six, and AP is improved by one. Normally it's AP zero, but you can see where I'm getting at. Very strong. Next up, let's go to the Bad Moons, their relic, the Gobshot Thunderbus. Bad Moon with a custom shooter only. This relic replaces that custom shooter with the Gobstop Thunderbus. 12 inch range, heavy 2d6, strength 5, AP minus 1, 1 damage. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack automatically hits its target. 2d6 auto hits so on average that's going to be seven auto hits okay that's strength five not bad it depends on what your target is but not bad again i simply feel that there's better relics for what you would probably be doing 
especially if you want to make a bad new bad moons or a boss on death killer war trike a or uh or on a war bike or boss on war bike one of those two just plain durable there is a better relic for that and this warlord trait could be good but there also might there's other warlord traits that compete with that as for if it's better or worse than those that's arguable the next one up is the evil sons here this is the idyllic the idyllic uh speed freaks army so the culture is red ones go faster add one inch to the move characteristic of models with this culture adding two if they are speed freaks model instead again this basically your buggies your bikes uh your def your def cop does i believe so i'll continue on here add one to the advanced rolls made for units with this culture and models with this culture do not suffer the penalty incurred for their hit rolls for firing assault weapons in the same term in which their unit advanced that sounds awesome that last bullet point until you realize in the back of the book here most of the speed freaks models that you would be using this with most of their weapons went from assault to either daca or heavy there's very comparatively speaking now there's very few assault weapons unfortunately so uh, this is more of a clan culture I would take if you are more concerned about positioning than anything else. The Evil Sun's Warlord trait is faster than use. In your command phase, select one friendly Evil Sun's core unit within six inches of this model. That unit is eligible to declare a charge even if they advanced or fell back this turn. So you don't need to call a normal wa you could have a speed wa and still advance and charge with this again this is a clan that's better with positioning than anything else um, let's see here Yep, there's not much more to go on that one. I'm trying to let my imagination kind of run wild on what you can do with that. But, so, eh. Like, there might be times when somebody charges your boys with something that they just can't handle. And just fall back and charge into something else. Eh. Evil Sun Stratagem is drive by Daka for one command point. Use this stratagem at the end of your shooting phase. Select one Evil Sun's Speed Freaks unit from your army. That unit can immediately make a normal move as if it were your movement phase. That unit is not eligible to declare charge. For one command point, again, let's say you're maybe you moved up your bikes or uh, or one of your buggies one of your buggy units to an enemy unit to shoot at them especially within DACA range and then you strive by DACA to go back maybe onto an objective or just to move block someone else that one definitely has utility in it it's not powerful by itself its utility the evil sun's relic is res mecca's reda paint evil sun's model only and can be taken by a vehicle model 
add to the move characteristic at the start of the fight phase if this warlord is within engagement range of enemy units those units cannot be selected to fight until all eligible units from your army the orc army here have done so let's see how many how many hqs are vehicles here How many HQs are vehicles here? Uh, just the Death Killer War Trike is a vehicle. Um, any others? Yeah, that's it. Now, granted, the Death Killer War Trike does have a very large base. I do not have one, so I can't really show you. Um, hmm. It is a Speed Freaks model, so it would get that in addition. So that'd be basically an extra 4 inches on a 14 inch uh, movement. So you'd be looking at 18 inch movement here. If you did take the Warlord trait faster than use, you dear, you could adva move this up, advance it, and charge it into me into enemy lines if you wanted to. But seeing as Speed Freaks are tend to be more of a shooting army, eh, yes, he can handle definitely handle himself in close combat. But I my focus would be on shooting for them. The good news is, even a 6 inch with that aura on a very large base and being able to move very quickly across the board at 18 inches plus your advance, if any, hmm. it has potential, but I don't know if it's the outright most powerful. Again, Evil Sons are great for positioning. Goths are great for the actual shooting. Sorry, Bad Moons are great for the actual shooting. Goths are great for uh, the Green Tide melee. Next up, we're going to the Snake Bites. To me, on a side note, I really like this, this, uh, the Beast Snaga models themselves at some point i wouldn't mind just creating an entire army of them but that would be later on down the road definitely not right now but i do like these models a lot so going on to that snake bites culture is called the old ways each time an attack is made against a unit with this culture, unless that attack is strength 8 or more, unmodified wound rules of 1 to 3 always fail. It doesn't rem matter what abilities the weapon or the model making the attack has. Alright, so this will usually come into play with strength 6 or 7. If you're fighting guard a lot like me this is basically just the uh oh we're not not last cannons the other the other la strength six laser weapon that guard have that i can't think of the name of all of a sudden i'm having a brain fart multi oh multi-laser there we go so multi your multi-lasers your auto cannons uh, if you're fighting something like Admech, the Rust, I believe it's the Rust Stalkers that can have the uh, Taser Goads. Normally those would go right through a lot of infantry being at strength 6 and being able to pile a lot of attacks on. Oh, this? Nope, doesn't matter. You're wounding on a 4, so that'll reduce a lot of the damage that you take right there. 
Next, each time a squig model with this culture makes a melee attack, if that model's unit made a charge move or performed a heroic intervention, add one to that attack's wound roll. So we'll go over this a little bit later. But B-Snaga units, uh, specifically thinking about the B-Snaga boys and the Squig Hog boys, that B-Snaga keyword is basically a plus one to hit vehicle monsters and vehicles. This wound roll is against everything. So even if you would be wounding something on a five, nope, now it's a four. Those, something that you would be hitting, wounding on threes, like your, well, fours or threes or fours, depending on regular boys or B snagger boys, uh, rather than wounding on, again, threes or fours. Oh, nope, now it's twos and threes. Very, very strong. I do like that as well. Actually, adding one to the attack's wound roll might be better than uh, the Goth's plus one strength. Though I do like the Goth's sixes score an additional hit, too. Hmm. So that's, that's another good, just from the culture itself. Snake bites and goths, to me, are in very good competition with each other for a melee or a cord. The, the green tide. Now I would also put in a lot of squig units. So right now it's basically just your squig hog boys, your... Uh, knobs on on the jo on the bigger squigs your war boss or your beast boss on squigazor and the uh, kill rig and the oh what is the other one that the kill rig can be i forget now but yeah you got your knob on smash a squig you got your squig hug boys let's see uh the squig buggies do not have that keyword Yep, there's the kill rig. Uh, does the kill rig does not have the squig keyword, even though it's being pulled by a squig. And the hunter rig does not have the squig keyword. So pretty much, let's see. You're looking at. Mazrog Scragbad, you're looking at Beast Boss on Squigazor, and your Squig Hog Riders. So, if you're going to do a army that's based around the Squig Hogs and the and the giant Squigs, they like the HQ. And have a lot of the Beast Naga boys, especially in support. This would be fantastic. Uh, but for in general against Goths, it's which one you would be better off taking. Really depends on like how many of the Squig units that you're actually taking. If you got a lot of the squig units, I'd say go snake bites. If you do not have a lot of the squig units and you're more, even if you if you just have like one or two regulars, any of these squig units, but everything else is still melee, mostly melee based, I'd go with goths. Uh, next up for the snake bites is their warlord trait. Surly as a Squigoth, and this is the one that Mazark Scragbad has. The first time this Warlord is destroyed, you can choose to roll a d6 at the end of the phase instead of any rules that are triggered when a model is destroyed. 
such as the orcs never beaten stratagem. If you do so, roll for, on a 4+, plus, set this warlord back up on the battlefield as close as possible as where they were destroyed and not within engagement range, range of enemy models, with d3 wounds remaining. So if you have a pain boss or either the HQ version and or the elite version of the uh, medic that's in this codex nearby, that's a no that's almost a no-brainer. But question is, would you in your list uh, take those? One one of them, both of them. And would they basically uh, travel with whatever warlord you would have in your snake bites army? May put that in the comment down below. You might have to take a look at some of the other videos that we're going to be posting here, or if you have it, the codex yourself already and are reading it. It's a lot easier to take a look but for me eh, this is another warlord trait that is simply out competed by the general warlord traits especially if you're going for something if you're going for close combat durability there's stuff that is probably going to be a little bit better Next, for the Snake Bites Stratagem, you have Mystic Chanting for one command point. Use this Stratagem during your opponent's Psychic Phase. Select one Snake Bites unit from your army. Until the end of that phase, that unit can attempt to deny one Psychic Power as if it were a Psyker. Okay, not bad for one command point. If you're fighting Thousand Suns or Grey Knights, it's probably not going to matter as much. But if you're fighting something like uh, Eldar, Space Marines, anything that will probably have only a few librarians or equivalent, this is very, very good. It just, it can be overloaded. And even then, it's only a chance. So, mm, it's something nice to have in the back pocket. It's not something I would turn down. But I do think that some a lot of the other clans have outright stronger uh, stratagems. The Snake Bites Relic is Brog's Buzz Bomb. This relic is a range 6, grenade 3d6, strength 5, AP minus 1, 1 damage, blast weapon. This unit can target units that are not visible to the bearer. The bearer can only shoot this weapon once per battle. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, that attack scores a hit on a roll of a 2 plus, irrespective of any modifiers. After shooting with this weapon, each unit within six inches suffers one mortal wound. So with snake bites, you're probably going to be taking the beast boss on Squigsaur or the regular beast boss. Especially if you're taking the beast boss, beast boss on Squigsaur, this is a little bit better. Just so that he doesn't get bogged down. So maybe you would throw it at a chaff unit that's in front of what you're actually trying to charge. This would be very good. But again, this relic competes with some very, very strong relics in the general relic section of the book. I... 
it looks very very good but I just compared to the stuff that you will see later in the codex this is one of those eh, I'd rather take some of these other relics especially the relic weapons that the orcs can take are phenomenal all right next up and oh, next up uh, is the death skulls they're the lucky blue gits each time a unit with this culture is selected to shoot or fight you can reroll one hit roll or one wound roll when resolving that unit's attacks Okay, that's basically saving every unit once per phase. That's a CP right there. Not bad. Each time a model in the, sorry, not in, with this culture would lose wound as a result of a mortal wound. On a roll d6, on a 5 up, that wound is not lost. If we were talking about the beginning of 9th edition... I would have just blown this trade off. But with the growing prevalence of mortal wounds in 9th edition, especially with Grey Knights and Thousand Sons, I like this trait more and more and more. And yes, it's only going to save one in three models, but that adds up, especially now. Next bullet point, infantry units with this culture gain objectives secured. So all infantry, not just your boys. So this is, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm not, we're not going to go in detail. All your HQs, of course, well, almost all your HQs, I'm sorry. This is your, there's the troops, we're not looking for them. This is your knobs, your pain boys, Mad Doc Grotznik. Well, Mad Doc Grotznik would not get that, I'm sorry. Wait, yes, actually, yes, he was, he would, he's Death Skulls. So yeah, you could. Your Burna Boys, your Ludas, your Mech, your Tank Bustas, your Commandos would get objective secured. Your Knobs and Mega Armor. There's quite a few in here that... Your Storm Boys, ooh, that'd be very, very good. I think I said your Ludas. That would be pretty good with how extensive that last bullet point is that's another winner right there as for how strong the death skulls culture list is again it's not outright strong by itself this is one that is very tactical I know that sounds weird with orcs and if you apply it correctly it is phenomenal but it's not one that again it's just something that you can just shove your orcs down the line and hope for the best this one takes some thinking Death Skull's Warlord trait is opportunist each time you select a target with your warlord, if you select a character within 12, you ignore some lookout, sir. Good. It's obviously better with some than others, but the trait itself is good. It's just that orcs are not the great shots. Each time an enemy vehicle is destroyed within six inches of this warlord, Gain a command point. Again, very tactical, but not outright powerful. This would add up over time. 
So with Death Skulls, to get that Warlord, the most out of that Warlord trait. Let's see. I would probably go with the Death Killer Ward Trike. And have Tank Bustas you work in unison. So like the Death Killer Ward Trike could just zoom right up, get a character within 12, and to a degree, do maybe do a little bit of damage. But have them go near a vehicle and have the tank buster shoot at it. That has a lot more potential to me. The Death Skull's stratagem is called Rekka's for two command points. Use this stratagem at the start of your shooting or fight phase. Select a Death Skull's core or character unit from your army until the end of the phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack that targets a vehicle, add one to the attack's wound roll. Do Tank Busters have the core keyword? Do Tank Busters have the core keyword? They do. So, just going to do this real quick, although it's not the official. Tank buses are tank hunters, and they get plus one to the hit roll for uh, shooting vehicles. So they would hit vehicles on four up. And their rocket launchers are strength eight. So you're going to be, with this stratagem, you'd be wounding most vehicles on threes. Ooh. There are some Toughness 9 stuff out there, but they're rare. But you're generally going to be wounding vehicles on 3s. And again, if you were to combine that with uh, Opportunist, there's some decent potential there. The Death Skull's Relic is Defixapas. Death Skull's mech or big mech, model only. Each time the bear uses their mechaniac or big mechaniac ability roll a d6 on a two up the vehicle regains an additional wound and you can select one enemy vehicle within 12 inches of the bearer not or and that enemy vehicle suffers d3 mortal wounds all right so basically he's taking parts from your enemy from the enemy model from the enemy vehicle I should say and putting it on one of your vehicles. Okay, <laughs> looting in the heat of, in the heat of battle. Okay, I can dig it. It's orcs. Okay, next culture are the blood axes. Their culture is tactics. Each time a ranged attack is made against a unit with this culture, if the attacker is more than 18 inches away, then the unit with this culture is treated as having light cover against that attack. Alright, it depends on who you're fighting, but okay. Uh, units with this culture are eligible to shoot or declare charge, but not both, in a turn in which they fell back. It has its applications, but again, not the strongest. The Blood Axe's Whirler trait is I've Got a Plan, Lads. This part I do like. At the end of the Deploy Forces step, select up to three Blood Axe units from your army and redeploy them. If the mission uses Strategic Reserves, any of those units can be placed into strategic reserve without spending additional command points, regardless of how many units are already in strategic reserves. If both players have abilities that redeploy units roll off, the winner chooses who redeploys first. Mm, okay. All 
especially if you put you can this is one that you can at least rely on and just put three key units in a bad position force your opponent to deploy to destroy those or at least move block them and then just shove them somewhere else where they're better suited okay that, that one is pretty darn good and it says three units they it's not based on points it's not based on power level it's just three units they can be as large or as small as you want all right that one has a lot of potential next up is dead sneaky their blood axe stratagem is one command point use the stratagem at the end of your command phase if the mission you are playing is using strategic reserves select one blood axe's infantry unit from your army that's not mega ama that is within three inches of a battlefield edge place that unit into strategic reserve okay it's not something i would go to blood axes for but eh, it's all right the strongest part of blood axes i think is the relic that's coming up and the warlord trait so let's look at the relic morgog's finkin cap blood axes only this relic may be taken by a vehicle model at the start of your command phase if the bearer is on the battlefield roll a d6 on a floor plus gain a command point so unlike the oh where is it the warlord trait the opportunist for death skulls death skulls requires you to kill a vehicle within six inches of your warlord blood axes it's a relic as long as you got him out he can hide out of line of sight and just purely be there to gain you command points nothing else just get just get the smallest uh hq model that you got or or whatever or just get this i shouldn't say hq i'm sorry get the smallest character model that you can get that is not named and give him this relic hide him out of line of sight and just reap the benefits i like that next up is the free buddhas this is the other main clan culture that you'll probably be using besides the bad moons if you are looking for a speed freaks or a shooting style orc list so with the free buddhas you have competitive streak each time a free buddhas unit from your army destroys an enemy unit after that unit's attacks have been resolved at the end of the phase each time an attack is made by another free buddhas unit with this culture from your army add one to the attack's hit roll that is psychic that is shooting that is assault you're probably not going to get in psychic it's going so it's mainly going to be uh shooting in close combat generally it's just easier to focus fire on a unit with shooting than it is from close combat so this is why it's really big use in speed freaks armies i know it sounds weird speed freaks that aren't evil sons but a lot of ludas some tank busters some uh, war bikers def coptas squig buggies very strong with this in fact you might even kick it off with a uh, with one of the planes that we'll go over in another video 
That is extremely powerful. Orcs hitting on fours in shooting. Twos in close combat. Very strong. Next up for the free Buddhas, we have the Warlord trait. Killer Reputation, this is an aura ability. While an enemy unit is within three inches of this model, minus one from leadership for models in that unit. Each time a combat attrition test is taken for that unit, minus one from the combat attrition test. Minus one leadership, minus one combat attrition tests. All right. There's ways to negate that in pr almost every army, but uh, it could come into play here and there. While a friendly free Buddha's unit is within six inches of this model, plus one to leadership. Okay, that part is pretty good, especially now. All right, but at the same time, if you keep your units a bit smaller, you probably shouldn't need that leader, extra boost in leadership. Uh, the Freebooter's stratagem is called Get Dilute for one command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your command phase. Select one Freebooter's infantry unit from your army that is on the battlefield. Until the start of your next command phase, that unit gains objective secured. All right. It has to be infantry, though. And free Buddhas these days are typically going to be in the speed freaks of some kind, or just, I should say, more of a shooting list. So if you, if you have something like Ludas or Tank Bustas, if you need to hold a backfield objective, this might do it, but you're probably not going to use it for that. Eh. It sounds good at first until you consider what you might be using it on. Comment down below in, on what units you would use it on and why. And what, I'm sorry, not why, in what circumstances it would be better. Because I'm just not thinking of a whole lot for this stratagem. Next up is the Free Buddha's Relic, the Bad Skull Banna. Free Buddha's model only. The, this relic may be taken on by a vehicle model. While an enemy unit is within six inches of the bear, it loses the objective secured ability. Again, if you're going to take it on a freebooter's vehicle, especially if you're going to take it on like your HQ, it's probably going to be that death kill war trike. Good movement range. So he could basically go help out one of your other units that's getting swarmed. But that has its applications. Not, not bad, but again, in the generic relics section, there is better stuff. Uh, the specialist mobs and the custom jobs and the mech custom jobs will be their own video. So, if you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. And if you think of anything that you would like to see more from this type of video, uh, put that in the comments down below. Thank you very much, and get your stuff painted.